It's the M7040. It came with two remotes. I don't know if these were installed in the factory or at the dealer before they sold it, but at any rate, they've been on there a while. And I'm running one on a top link right now. The top link was a little tricky to find because it's three quarter inch diameter at the tractor end, but one inch diameter at the implement end. Even though I have a three quarter inch pin in there right now, I have a bushing to, uh, to make it fit because this particular implement has category one size at the top. Uh, but anyway, so getting back to these remotes. Best I could tell they were proprietary that you had to get them from Kubota wasn't just an industrial part off the shelf like we use on the smaller tractor and so I had to buy the valves and then I bought a third valve kit and uh, going to replace one of these existing valves with one with the float capability and then the new valve will also have the float capability so we'll have two that can float uh, I'd like for them all to float but the instructions say that the bottom valve the first one uh, is not capable of float I don't know why but uh, maybe that will become apparent and so I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, tie rods out, which are these three pieces here. They have to be longer, and so the installation kit for the third valve includes the new longer tie rods. I just go ahead and pull those off and then uh, get the new valve bodies bolted into place. I'm trying to think about how I can do this project in stages so that I don't lose X uh, function of the tractor in case I need it for something. It gets stuck along the way. So these are the two float assemblies. You can tell the valve is different because it has this big piece that sticks out. It comes with the couplings, comes with the caps, o-rings, and directions, and then the rest all comes in the lever kit. Well, I tried removing these two smaller nuts, which are the forward nuts, and then the large nut, which is the rear, and just kind of tap it on this assembly to see if I could get this cap off. It's still a little bit stuck, so I'm going to see if I can jam on these nuts and actually remove the entire tie rod and then just slide this cap off instead of having to lift it off. This double nut arrangement helps to grip the tie rod. Since the tie rod's got to come out anyway for this project, we will might as well do it now. You can see how it just turned from the bottom nut and the tie rod spins with it. That worked out pretty well. I got the tie rod out. I think it was just stuck on that top cap with some corrosion. Definitely doesn't look like it's worth saving these things. Their sacrificial zinc coating has done its job. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the other two tie rods and then remove this number two valve and prepare the stack for the new three valves with their new tie rods. These forward rods Use the same arrangement. I used the two nuts jammed together to get some bite with the wrench, but it's coming out pretty easy once I got it started. I'm interested to see how the height works out here because there's a piece of tractor up here in the way. I sure hope we don't have to get into taking something like that off. Ah, no, it's fine. So there's that length of tie rod associated with two remote valves. There's an awful lot of corrosion there. I guess it'll be good when we can get this thing stored inside. You know, it's interesting. When I took these off, the long threads of the, the studs, the tie rods, were down. But it looks like they're supposed to be the other way around. So, I don't know. Being that the, uh, the folks who installed these things torque the nuts so hard that they deform the bottom of the nuts to match the, uh, the lock washers. I'm thinking I might trust the manual rather than the previous install. So you can see the length difference between the new and the old rods. So our fears from before have come true, which is that the space between the studs and the piece here, there's not enough room for the valve to slide in and then slide down. So I'm going to have to at least loosen that piece. So under this little rubber plug, there's a bolt that requires a 12 millimeter socket. There's one on each side. So interestingly, on the right side of the tractor, this 12 millimeter bolt was backed up with a nut on the other side be able to get it fully out and the left side it, the nut is welded. I don't know if that's a factory thing or if this was something that happened along the line in service if they stripped off the, an original welded nut but in any case that's how mine is and then with those loose I think we might have enough movement 
in this piece to get the valves on without having to take the part all the way off, I'm hoping. Good news, that worked out just like I was hoping, so now I'll rig up the third valve with its hardware and uh, preparing it for the linkage. The third linkage isn't run yet, but we'll at least get everything ready for it before we put it on the tractor. All right, I got my sandwich built up here. I got the 14 millimeter size hex and 12 millimeter size hex tightened up. Now I'm going to put on the couplers and then work on uh, routing the cable before I secure the seat floor because I want to make sure it doesn't need to come off anymore. All right, so here's the couplers in place. We've got these nice little spring caps like those. Started routing the wire, they call it the control cable, from the lever area. I pulled off this cover for the loader valve, pulled off the top of this cover, which required the two bolts, which you can see really obviously, and then it has to slide forward a little bit to release itself from the, uh, the other lever. So then over here there's a nut Had to remove that nut and then remove a circlip that was over here. The circlip held the number two lever in place. And so with that circlip removed and this nut removed, I could slide the pivot point over far enough to put in this new third lever, which you can tell has the fresher paint. And it's just assembled to the cable based on the directions with the little clevis there. So now I've got to figure out how to get down in there to attach the, uh, the nuts that hold this lever in place. And so this love this cover has one screw over here that I took out. The second one is kind of inaccessible based on the loader there. So I don't know. Might see if I can just kind of flex it out of the way enough to get the job done or maybe come up from underneath just to not have to take the whole loader valve off. So I decided to go ahead and take this loader valve off. This bracket has the two 12 millimeter head bolts and the two 14 millimeter head bolts. And that allowed me to take the rest of the cover off with the 10 millimeter um, head bolt, which is a six millimeter actual bolt here. And uh, I think there was one over, or these two, top and the bottom. Anyway, getting that cover out of the way, I think is pretty much a requirement for getting in to attaching this cable and rigging it. Right now I have the cable threaded, and it's a different style cable as you can see from the other two. Definitely a different style boot. But I have the top nut threaded up as high as possible. And I'm going to tighten up that bottom nut and allow it to pull the assembly together because um, that kind of determines the zero point for these levers. And right now, number three is too far back. But I'm hopeful that once I tighten that up, it'll pull it up to uh, be in position. This is definitely some tight quarters. What I've got is a 19 millimeter crow foot on an extension here. And I just basically put it in position, snug it up, lift it up. Turn it again, but using my just hand tension to tighten until I get to the point where I need the ratchet handle, and then I'll switch to that. All right, we've about got it all rigged up here. I put a little lube on the old cables because they didn't get a lot of use and they were pretty stiff. The number two in particular. Number one is our conventional valve, and so you can see it's got the float detent up at the front. Number two does that also. But at any rate. I think we about got it there. I've got a third function kit to install on the loader valve, so I'll probably leave some of this taken apart until I run the wires for that. 